The aggregate expenditure model, or AE model, is the first comprehensive macroeconomic model that first-year students study in economics. It's oftentimes known as the simplest macroeconomic model. And this model relates actual GDP, also known as actual income, to the macroeconomy's desired GDP or desired spending. And the economy's actual spending can be measured by the macroeconomy's actual spending on consumption, actual spending on investment, and actual spending on government spending, and finally, actual net export spending. And we can use an equation, well, we can use the GDP expenditure equation to get our economy's desired spending level as the desired spending on consumption, desired investment spending, desired government spending, and desired net export spending. So this will be the equation that will be the basis of the aggregate expenditure model. Now, the AE model represents a country's desired or planned spending given real life conditions. And these conditions or constraints are, for instance, resource constraints, income constraints, pricing constraints, etc. Obviously, in a world where there are no constraints, the desired level of spending would be as high as possible. It would be infinity. But in reality, the number of const there are a lot of constraints. So the AE model builds in some of these constraints to find an optimal equilibrium level of desired spending in the macroeconomy in light of these constraints. So the macroeconomy is in what's known as equilibrium when planned spending equals actual expenditures or actual income, income or actual GDP. And this occurs when AE, AE represents desired spending equals Y. And I'm just gonna superscript Y with Y star, meaning uh, equilibrium. Star is oftentimes used to denote equilibrium in economics. And before we jump into the model specifics, there are two types of general spending categories in the AE world. The first type, these expenditures are expenditures that do not vary or change with national income. These types of expenditures are called autonomous expenditures. So they're, in, in other words, they're constant. They're constant and not a function of actual income of GDP or Y. And examples of these, well, a country, regardless of how, how much uh, GDP a country earns, a country needs to spend, spend certain amounts on basic sustenance. If you think about it in, in, as a, from a consumer's perspective, if a consumer, if a person has zero income, the person still has to, has to spend some money in order to, to stay alive. They have to spend some money on basic food, basic shelter, basic clothing, etc. So you can interpret autonomous expenditures or autonomous spending as spending that is needed for the country for basic sustenance. That doesn't depend on the level of income of the country. The other type of expenditures are induced spending or expenditures. And induced expenditures, these expenditures do vary with the level of national income. And they vary in a positive way. If the country earns more income, has more GDP, this type of spending, the induced spending, is more, increases. And that means induced expenditures are a function of why 
in mathematical terms. And if we use the same example from a consumer's perspective, if you earn more money, you're going to spend more. You're going to spend increase your spending on things like cars, on things like a better home, etc. These are are examples of induced spending.